Hi everyone, now let's take a look at the main line of left zero to four strategy. So from this position where you push the third file pawn to 3e, uh, whose main line is pawn to 5d. So now let's take a look at it. So the joystick moves from here is pawn to 3d and silver recaptures. So what should black do here? Well, uh, one option uh, that is not the primary line is pawn drop to 3e. Well, this looks a little bit heavy, right? But actually this is indeed one option for black. Uh, because after uh, Sibir goes back, uh, this structure of securing the pawn uh, diagonally is not a very good structure. So what Black's going to do here is he tries to secure the pawn with placing the silver to here on 3f. So one way to do that is Black can move this silver to here and here and secure this pawn and then get rid of this silver and pushes this pawn and attack on the fourth file. Oh, he can also uh, develop his knight to attack there, of course. And uh, another way is to, uh, instead of using this silver, uh, he can move this silver back once and then move it again to here, uh, securing this pawn, and then attack the fourth file. And actually, these strategies are called semi-rapid attack. So these are completely different from uh, the major strategies in silver to 4 strategy. But it's pretty interesting. However, uh, why is not going to let Black do these kind of things uh, too easily? Why has his way of dealing with it? So it's another uh, difficult game. But in this video, we're not going to go into semi-rapid attack. I only want to discuss the main line, so let's not drop the pawn 3 here. So now let's take a look at uh, the main Joseki. Uh, so if you look at this position, normally you might want to move your rook to 3h, right? Attack it, assume. Uh, well, this is a very natural move. But the thing is, this is not the Joseki move. Uh, the Joseki move is actually, it's pawn to 2d here. And basically white takes it, and then rook to 3h. This is the Joseki move. Yeah, it's very interesting sequence. Why do we need that pawn sec? It's hard to tell. So what we're going to do in this video is, uh, first, I'm going to show you what happens after simply moving the rook to 3h, uh, which won't be successful for black. And then after that, uh, we're going to go into the main line of uh, pawn sack and rook to 3h. And I'm going to show you why that pawn sack is necessary, okay? So after this uh, simple rook move to 3h, uh, for one thing, moving the server back to 3c, uh, 4c, saving itself, it's not very good. Black can just uh, drop a pawn here, but will move the bishop to 4b rather than 2b, because he can develop it to here. Uh, but black can secure that pawn on 3d, and when it comes to this position, it's actually good for black. So white will develop the bishop here. Black can block it. And there's nothing white can do, so he'll move the lance to 1b, uh, getting away from the bishop's diagonal, uh, because black's an attack on the fourth file. Uh, but black's not going to do that now, of course. He's going to lose his lance, so rook to 3f. And later on, he can develop his knight and then attack on the fourth file. So this position is very good for black. So there's no way uh, White can uh, save his silver to force here. So the Joseki move for White here is pawn to 4e, opening a bishop's diagonal. Uh, well, this is a cool move. Well, he can take the silver for free, right? But don't get trapped with it. Uh, he can uh, bishop trade and a discovered attack on the rook. So you lose the rook. Be careful. So you can take the silver, and the Joseki move is bishop promotion. And he takes it with the rook, and he saves the silver. Okay, so what should black do here? Uh, well, normally, uh, you should save the silver. Oh, and the reason why I said pawn to 5d is the main line for white uh, at that position. Uh, well, this pawn is very important because the silver can't uh, develop here, right? So basically, it has to run to 5g, right? Well, 3g will block the rook, so 5g. Uh, but then white can open the rook's attack, and black can only accept the trade, of course. And, uh, well, if you drop a rook simply here, the knight can go away. So, instead of dropping it, uh, there's a very good pawn sack here, a very good tactic, and then the rook drop. It's a skewer, so the knight can't go away. However, if I can then move the silver back to 4c, and actually black cannot take the knight yet, because uh, uh, here's a bishop fork. So actually, this position is not so good for black. So uh, the thing is, uh, from this position, black can't save his zero to 5g. 
Now, what should Black do? It's going to just lose the silver. Uh, well, the Joseki move from here is Bishop drop uh, to 6f. Well, 7g, 8h, it doesn't matter, but maybe 6f. Uh, also uh, aiming at the edge. Well, but uh, there's some difference because uh, he'll take the silver now and Black takes the rook and he recaptures so Black can take the silver back and material balance is even. However, here's a very strong difference from White that is gold to 4c. Uh, well, Black can only uh, save his rook, but you know, many bishop drops can occur uh, in these areas. Uh, he has two bishops, so uh, there's no very comfortable position for the rook. Maybe 3f is the best position, but bishop drop, uh, let's say you block it, well then another bishop drop, uh, maybe 3g, and he makes a powerful horse here. Uh, well, this is good for white, black can drop a rook, but a very solid silver drop. Well, more violently, uh, black can try not to block his bishop, and just go ahead and drop a rook, attacking the gold. So uh, he'll drop a silver first, and after you take the lance, he takes the lance too. And you can block the horse by silver, and horse runs, and you can capture the horse, but he sacks it, and maybe a lance drop here. Well, you can't block it with a pawn, because he can just take it and uh, king rook fork. So black has to run to 4f, uh, lance promotion, Sort of 5g. Well, he takes the knight and threatens a uh, knight drop to 8d, uh, 6d. So this position is good for white too. So uh, that's the consequence of simply moving the rook to 3h. Black's attack is not successful. Oh, and uh, I forgot to tell. Other than bishop drop to 6f, how about 2b? Well, this time he can take the lance, right? I mean, if white takes the silver, take this rook is going to be the same thing, but he has an option of taking this lance. Uh, but anyway, after this bishop drop, white has a counterattack of this bishop drop attacking the lance. And uh, so, let's say black takes the rook, uh, white recaptures, and black can win the silver. And uh, yeah, white will take the silver, but if he does that, black can stop the bishop. So this position is good for black. However, white won't take the silver here and promotes the bishop first. Yeah, you block it with the silver, of course. And if the horse runs, the silver can go away. But the horse won't run. He abandons the horse, and still he doesn't take the silver. He first blocks the rook, and then he takes the silver. And, uh, you know, this king is loaning here. You know, maybe uh, this bishop drop is a big threat. Uh, sometimes it can be a uh, king rook fork. So, this position is good for uh, white too. Oh, but there's one thing I didn't show you. Uh, this position actually is a very, very brilliant move from black, uh, which is silver to 5e. Uh, well, this is very cool, because if white simply takes it, now black can take the rook and take the silver, and the bishop cannot promote. Uh, if he opens the bishop's diagonal now, I can block it. So, uh, that silver second 5e seems to be a very cool one, but uh, there's an even more brilliant move from white, that is silver to force the openings the rook's attack. Well, actually, black can only go ahead for the trade, so the bishop can run away from the silver's attack, and this attack remains. So, as a conclusion, uh, here, moving the rook to 3h, won't be successful for black. Okay, so now let's take a look at the best Joseki move for black, which is pawn sacrifice and then rook to 3h. Oh, by the way, uh, if we go back a little, uh, you took this pawn first and then you sack this one. Don't mix up the moving order, uh, because if you uh, try to sack this pawn first, he won't take it with a pawn, he can take it with a bishop. So, uh, black's in trouble. Even if you take it, I uh, can take it with the rook. Oh, there's a pawn drop on 2b, but knight can go away. Pawn promotion, and knight can go ahead. Maybe a uh, bishop sack here and drop the silver to here. So uh, don't mix up uh, the moving order. You have to take this pawn first and then sack this one. 
in this way, uh, now the bishop cannot take this one, right? Uh, because of this bishop move. So he has to take the pawn and then uh, rook 3 h. Okay, so now let's take a look at what's the point of that pawn sacrifice. Okay, so uh, the following Joseph move would be, of course, pawn to 4 e and uh, bishop trade, rook recaptures, and yeah, bishop 6 f, he takes the silver, okay, and you take the silver, right? But now you see the difference. What a thoughtful and deliberate preparation that pawn sack was. Because uh, if the gold comes over to 4 c, black can move the rook to 2 d, and black can break the second file. Very cool. Uh, so sometimes Joseki is amazing. It's the result of many years of struggles by professional players. So maybe uh, I can only uh, drop a pawn to here saving the knight. Well, even so, black can uh, simply uh, go ahead and break the second file, or black can just start the attack with another rook like this, and this position is said to be good for black. Okay, so uh, here at this position, remember, pawn sack and rook to 3h. So after this position, we've learned that black's attack will be successful if uh, quite simply opens the diagonal. However, the story is not going to end here. After this pawn sack uh, was discovered, there came many countermeasures against it uh, from white side, uh, which are very interesting. And the interesting part is, uh, with this pawn sack on 2D, black gave another pawn to white's hand. So white has two pawns in his hand, and uh, some of the countermeasures for white takes advantage of these two pawns in his hand. It's very interesting, right? If black comes up with this pawn sack, then white comes up with a countermeasure using that pawn. So uh, we're going to start seeing the countermeasures for white from this position from next videos. Uh, if I were to show you the countermeasures, uh, one is pawn drop to 3f, uh, very interesting, and another is pawn drop to 3f, and there are also bishop to 2b or gold to 4c, uh, many countermeasures for white. Alright, so that's all for this lesson. Take care, hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.